Hi folks, thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist and at the end of last year we moved to a nearly 200 year old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dog, Jack Spaniels. This week, as frost settles and cold winds blow through the glen, it really feels like winter is well and truly on its way. And despite the ongoing repairs and upgrades, the Land Rover Defender proves its worth as I go to pick up some essential supplies to see us through the harsh winter months ahead. Plus, I put my foraged laundry detergent to the test. And I stock up the cottage freezer just in time before the cold weather hits. Join, Join us, us as, as we, we continue. continue. Live in the sky life. As you can see, I'm in the Land Rover and the reason I'm in the Land Rover is I'm going to pick up some wood for the fire. You can get wood delivered here, but one place in Kyle is selling hardwood and I prefer hardwood in the fire because it burns longer and because it just smells nicer to be quite honest. It really smells nice, especially birch. So I'm hoping there's some of that in the mix. So I'm going to fill the back of the Land Rover full of wood. I've got a ton bag in the back there ready to take as much as I can get in and I know that the Land Rover is capable of taking 650 kilos. I'm certainly not going to go over that. So let's go to Kyle and pick up some wood. Here we go. I like that sound. Well, I've just arrived in uh, Kyle and I'm going to go and pick up this wood now. I've already seen it back there. Yeah, let's get some of this firewood. Cool, right, just going to get that into the car now. There we have it, fully loaded. It weighs a maximum of 350 kilos and the car can take 650, so I would say that's fine. I'll go and pay them now. Car's all loaded and I've just driven around the corner and I'm in the centre of Kyle of Loch Alsh now. Why I'm here is because I've got to go to my favourite butchers and my favourite wee hardware shop as well. I might as well, I'm here anyway, right? So that's what I'm going to do. Maybe get some lamb chops for dinner or whatever and a couple of cans of spray paint if they've got them. So yeah. Let's do that. Well, I did get my spray paint and I got some other bits for my screwdriver, but uh, the butcher is shut. Got it. At Ace, they've got really, really good haggis and lots of other things as well. But the main thing that I was here for is the lamb chops, and lamb chops are amazing. But they're shut. <laughs> Got it. It's just my luck, isn't it? They would close on a Monday. Must work all weekend, I guess. Oh well. Back to Skyleaf Cottage. I just stopped in Broadford to get a bite and also fill up the car with diesel and I'm just looking at the windscreen now and it's absolutely stunning. What a beautiful day. It just reminds me of where we used to live and you know we went to an Aldi which was on an industrial estate. It's times like this when it's so stunning that you really do appreciate living on sky and the hills over there have got snow on them as well. Winter's coming eh? So beautiful and really warm as well. I'm in a t-shirt today. It's mad. I'm back at Skylife Cottage and to prove it, here is Sarah. Hello. And we're going to now get the wood out of the car and put it into our store. And we've prepped it a bit because it was a bit of a mess. So we've got our old soft wood on the left and we're going to put our hard wood on the right. That's the plan. Well, we hope it's going to fit. We'll see. I have my uh, child's gardening gloves ready to go. Excellent. <laughs> All stacked up. Sarah's so done a sterling job there. Looks great. So that's all the old wood there. That's the soft wood, and that's all the hard wood on the right. So that should keep us through the winter.
You might remember a couple of weeks ago we went to Inverness and we went to a castle where I found some conkers and came home with a pocket full of them to try and make some detergent. <laughs> One of those madcap ideas I saw on Instagram and thought would be a good idea to try. I put the conkers in the freezer when we came home because I didn't have time to make them at that time. I'm gonna get some out now and I'm gonna try and make this laundry detergent from horse chestnuts. I don't think Willie is convinced about this idea, but hey, we'll give it a go. I think there's something in them called, I think it's saponin, saponins, something like that. And that is the soap element of the conkers. They are toxic to eat. So definitely don't put them in anything edible. They're not like sweet chestnuts. I'm gonna thaw about 130 grams of the conkers. And then once they're thawed, I'm gonna chop them, take the skins off because otherwise it goes brown, the liquid. Cover them in boiling water, 500 milliliters. And then I'm gonna leave them overnight to soak into the water. We'll see how it goes. I have a test all lined up. I've got this old rag, which I spilt some of the elderberry cordial on, which is really bad for staining. So we'll see if it manages to get that stain out, then it's doing a good job. I don't know if it will though. horse chestnuts chopped and prepped and in the boiling water and they're gonna soak there overnight and then tomorrow I'll get on with the second half of doing it so it's a lovely sort of yellow color at the moment it doesn't have a bad scent it's kind of woody um obviously you can obviously tell it's something natural but it doesn't have a really overwhelming scent so we'll see you can actually put drops of essential oil into it if you want it scented but I don't have any of those so we'll just go with what we've got Now that both the steps and the Land Rover are working, I've decided that I'm going to take off the rubber mats, these, I've already taken this one off, and the other side, and I'm going to grind them back, and then I'm going to paint them. I think then I'll put some grip tape on them, rather than putting these back on, because these have seen better days. They're uh, a bit tight, to say the least. I did think about buying other ones, but I don't think I'm going to bother. I think I'm just going to grind them back and then put some decent grip tape on there to stop people sliding on them, and obviously paint them as well. So let's do that. Believe it or not, that's all that's left of the pop rivets that were holding the rubber parts on. They're gone and the mats on both sides are now here and they're too far gone. Look at that. Can't really do much with that. I wish I could keep them but they're too far gone so I'll grind them back, I'll paint them and uh, put that grip tape on I reckon. Right, I've got most of the rust off now, so the next step is I'm going to uh, put the rust treatment on it. Now this isn't a permanent job, I will have to replace these, but this is just for this year. So I'm hoping this will get me through the winter. They're freed up, but they're not going to last very long if I don't do anything about the rusting issues. So I'm going to paint them um, for this year and then next year we'll reassess, but I think I'll have to replace them. It's worth pointing out that the bolts are all seized on this, otherwise I'd be taking the whole thing apart and doing each part separately. But as it happens, I can't do that because I can't get the bolts out without destroying Destroying it. So that's why I'm just doing it this season like this. Next season, either replace them completely or I'll strip them all down and replace the bolts, etc. But I don't want to do that this season. We've got very small windows of weather that I can work in. And I mean tiny, sometimes half a day. And today's one of those days. This morning was heavy rain, really bad wind. I've got a bit of sunshine now, so I'm seizing that opportunity just to get the parts of the car working and protect them for the winter to come. That's the rust treatment doing its thing. Now I'll do the other side. I won't film that because it's the same thing. The rust treatment has dried off, so I'll do a couple of coats of paint now and that'll do me for now. I just had to pop over to Richard's house because he was working on a car for someone. Uh, he was doing the brakes. So I just said to him about the problem with my steps because I don't have the rubber parts anymore. And he said, well, what about a bit of checker plate? And I said, that would be good. 
And he had some, of course, because he's Richard. So he's given me this piece of checker plate for nothing. So I'm just going to cut sections out of that and put that on the steps. And I won't need to replace the rubber. That'll look even better than the rubber did in the first place. Happy days. Nice one, Richard. It's the next morning and I have strained off the liquid that I got from the Conkers, which is a lovely shade of urine yellow. And what I'm gonna do now is blitz the pieces of Conker with a hand blender and add some more boiling water to them, another 500 milliliters. That should really foam up because we're getting a lot of the soap stuff out of the Conkers. So I'm gonna do that, leave it for a few hours and then that should give us one liter of detergent. It's all done. I have a bottle of Conker or horse chestnut detergent for the laundry. <laughs> it's definitely foamy. I guess the only thing to do now is to give it a try and do some laundry. And typically it's an absolutely terrible day for laundry. It's rainy, it's cold. We're gonna have to hang it up inside, but gotta give this a go. I have my elderberry stained cloth as well as a load of darks. Let's do this. We use our washing machine on the quick setting because we need to save water because we have our own private water supply and we usually do darks at 30 degrees. So let's see how this turns out. Laundry is done and you know what? I am pleasantly surprised with how well that worked. I was watching it when it started and I couldn't see any suds or any bubbles forming. I thought it's not gonna work, it's not soapy enough. After a little while, I saw the suds forming, which is amazing. So it does actually work. The laundry smells clean, it looks clean. It doesn't have any particular scent. We don't really like strong perfumes in our detergent anyway, so that seems to have worked really well. The main test was going to be, if you remember, I put the elderberry cordial on that old rag and... Dun, 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 dun. Moment of truth. It's gone! That's quite amazing. Like, ignore how grey it is, because that's just how the cloth was anyway. If I wanted extra whitening on the laundry, I could pre-treat it with lemon juice and vinegar. Um, but this was just an old rag anyway, so it was just, it was grey and old. Um, but all of the elderberry is gone. All of that stain. Like, that's quite incredible. I'm actually really impressed. Genuinely didn't think that was going to come out with the Conker detergent, and it did. And it all smells really clean. Am I crazy for wanting to use this going forwards? <laughs> I've still got quite a lot of Conkers in the freezer, so it might have to happen. Once you've made it, you can't freeze that liquid, but you can freeze the Conkers. So I've still got some in the freezer. I might have to use this. <laughs> it's not going to last us all year, but... I'm I'm quite impressed with that. So there you go. Detergent from Conkers. Who knew? <laughs> in the name of transparency, I have to tell you that we didn't end up using this detergent again. I left it out in the kitchen thinking it would be cool enough and it spoiled within a few days. I will try making it again, but this time we'll remember to refrigerate it. There was also a greasy mark on one of the items of clothing that it didn't remove, so it won't be replacing our regular detergent completely. But it was still a fun experiment. So after all that excitement, I now have to go and hang out the laundry, which is the not so fun part. What do you think of Conquer detergent? Let us know if you would use it in the comments below. It's the next day. It's quite windy and very rainy. However, the paint is dry. It dried overnight, so that's great. So now I'm just measuring the size of the plate for each step and then I'll cut the plate and then I'll shape it, bore holes in it, bore holes in the steps and then I'll rivet it in place. First step, measure it. So that's about 260. No, 265. And I want a little bit of clearance so it doesn't start to climb up the back on the curve. So I want it to be a little bit away and to about the edge nearly. So 265 by 150. Let's get this metal cut. I'm gonna be doing this in the shed today for obvious reasons. 
I'm looking at the metal and it doesn't appear to have any true edges. <laughs> I think probably Richard or someone else in the past has been just cutting pieces off this for various projects. I think I might have one side that has a factory cut on it, but even then that's slightly distorted. I don't know why actually, maybe it's been hit by a couple of hammers in its life or whatnot, I don't know. But I'm going to go with the, the left hand side being the factory cut and I'm going to work from that and then I'll use my uh, right angle and my rule and try and get them as straight as I possibly can. Right, here's my plate that I'm going to cut out. So get the angle grinder ready and do some cutting. All right, one plate done. So I've done a little bit of tidying up and I've already ground this corner off and this one for the step and I'm going to do the next one here. I'm just putting it in the table here and angle grinding off the corners. Next step after that will be to tidy up and debar them and then it'll be time to drill the holes, mark it on the car, on the steps and then drill the holes through the steps and finally rivet them in place. But anyway, let's cut the corners off this one now. Here we go. After that, next side. I think that's about it. So I'm just taking all these edges off. It doesn't take long and I'll finish it with the file. All right, so here's the plates. I finished them with a the file. Just took a couple of minutes to do that. And I took a little bit of sandpaper to them as well. And I've marked out on the back here of this one and on this one, on the inside of the corners there, there, there and there. That's where I'm going to drill my holes on both of them. And that should be it, pretty much for that. Now that I've bored the holes, I'm going to clean them up with this drill and a wire brush fitting on it. There we have it. Nice and shiny. Before and after. Okay, so I've just marked where they're going with this pen. That's my marks. So let's get them drilled. The last job is now just to pop rivet that in place. The holes have gone through in the right place, which is good. So let's get that stuck on there now. And there we have it. That looks great. The other side, I'll just paint these. I think that looks really cool. Very, very happy with that indeed. Perfectly functional, perfectly solid. I've done the other side as well, but it looks exactly the same. Yeah, I'm so chuffed with that. That's a great job, well done. Um, and that'll last probably a lot longer than I thought it was going to. So thank you, Richard, for that metal, and I'll get the rest of it back to him as well. Nice one. <laughs> car as you can see and the reason I'm in the car is I'm going to car boss to go fishing from the pier and what happened was when I took the boat out I didn't get a chance to go on a final fishing trip which is a nightmare because it means that I've got no mackerel in the freezer mackerel is the bait that I use for lobster pots but lobsters come in before the mackerel so if you don't have any frozen mackerel at the start of the lobster season you don't have any bait to put in the pots which is no good it's the tail end of the season so I'm hoping there's still some mackerel about the water isn't deep enough around here so I'm going to car boss because there's much deeper water in Loch Port. Hopefully I'll get a few for the freezer. If not, hopefully I'll have a good time fishing anyway. So let's see what I can catch. Just got the car bus and the coolings are looking absolutely amazing. Check this out. They always look pretty special, but with that cloud there, that's stunning. Lovely. Let's go fishing. Oh, that's good. 
camper. It's quite small, but it's for pain anyway, so it's fine. Let's dispatch that now, quickly. <laughs> Richard's come to join me. I need some crisps on the pier. Come on, fish. Get this one in. Potries. And a leaf. That's the smallest mackerel I think I've ever seen. Smallest mackerel ever. Oh, a bit more weight to this one. Way finally. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I only need to catch a few it's for next season. Hey, nice. Well, in the end, I've got seven fish that I can keep. I don't know how many little tiddlers I caught and put back. They were all returned safely, and I've only taken the fish that I need for bait for the start of next season's lobster pot in. So these fish will go straight in the freezer when I get in, and I won't touch them again probably until about May or June when lobster season starts again. That was great. I enjoyed it. Impromptu. I just thought, you know what? It's nice weather. It's been a bit rubbish recently, so. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go out and see if I can catch a few mackerel for the freezer which I have. So, happy days, back to Skyleaf Cottage. We've just had some posts in the Skyleaf Studios and um, it's from Discover and Draw, which is uh, another small business. She does paintings and digital artworks and I follow her on Instagram and I entered a giveaway and I won! Well done. That's a nice feeling, isn't it? That's cool. So Lily at Discover and Draw has sent us two prints, which are of two scenes from Glencoe. So not on the Isle of Skye, I'm afraid. No, but we love Glencoe. We do love Glencoe. Glencoe has a special place in my heart because we used to go there on family holidays when I was younger. I genuinely didn't think I would win. <laughs> no. Lucky. I wonder how many people entered. Oh, we have little postcards. That's cool. Oh, nice. Oh, it's so nice, look at that. That's cool. We'll obviously straighten them out. We'll show you them properly on screen. But there's this tiny wee house just by the mountains in Glencoe. Everyone loves it. It's really iconic and people take lots of pictures of it. I think it's a bothy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, a bothy. So it's a place you can stay overnight if you're climbing in the hills. So I think these are digital artworks and she's done prints of them, which we have as a giveaway prize. That's so Very cool. cool. Very cool. I think they go well together, so we'll have to get them framed up and put them somewhere in the house. Definitely. The, the colours on this is lovely. I think that that really encapsulates the highlands, that, that sort of brownish, like, ochre colours. Yeah, that's like the colours we have now. Mm -hmm. All the bracken and yeah, the heather nice. dying off. Yeah. And then this is really cold, sort of wintry tones. We're just appreciating them, so yeah, yeah. we really love them. They're really cool. They're really nice. nice uh, texture going on there. Oh, two swans just flew by. Three! <laughs> outside the window. I'll put her details, her Instagram details below in the video description if you do want to give her a follow because she does some really cool artwork all about the mountains in Scotland. So yeah. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Happy with that. That's a nice little surprise for a Monday morning. It's a few days later since we received those lovely prints of Glencoe from Lily at Discover and Draw and I've got some frames. I ordered them from an online company and they got delivered really quickly actually. Um, it just took a couple of days so that was really quite nice. So I've got those, I'm very excited to see them framed up and once I've done that we can decide where we're going to hang them. You might remember we've got a couple of spaces in the cottage where we do want some artwork on the walls so I'm hoping these are going to look really nice in either the space above the sofa and then again in the bedroom there's space above the head of the bed which is the V-lining, but it's been whitewashed, so it's been painted white. So either on those two spaces, I think, might be where they're going. Or they might go in my studio. We'll just have to see. As you can see, I'm still going with calendar packaging and prints. 
and mugs, everything else. Thank you so much to everyone that has bought from my Etsy store and yep, yeah, supporting our small business, just like Discover and Draw as well. They're a small independent business and the link will be in the video description below if you want to go check out Lily's work as well. Let's see how these look in the frames now. Matches the brown tones in the mountains. The other one was so easy. Let's try them out in the house and see where we're going to hang them. So we thought about having them here, but thought they were a bit too small for this wall. So we're going to wait and get something bigger, aren't we? Yeah. Bit of a bigger statement artwork to go there, maybe. So they're going to go up there. And my handyman is going to put them up now. Oh, I am, Mama. Uh -huh. It's a Sunday. We're in slouch wear. Mm -hmm. Well... You like him? Yeah, looks really cool. Thank Can you. I go back to slouching now because it's Sunday? No. Nope. What have I got to do next? Because it's a sunny Sunday. So what are we doing now? We need to go outside. Go for a wander? Mm -hmm. Fair enough. By the way, I celebrated my birthday last night. If I look a little dishevelled. So uh, <laughs> my friend Darren came up from Kirkcaldy and we went out in the town. Well, actually, we went on a little road trip through Sky. We didn't film that either. No. So I'm uh, feeling a little bit sluggish today, but we'll be okay. Yeah, it's because you're getting so old. folks thank you so much for watching our video we really hope you enjoyed it and if you did please leave us a like a comment or subscribe to our channel if you don't already it's free to do it helps us out and we are so close to that 50k that we want to reach by christmas that'd be so cool oh. if we could do that for christmas wouldn't it it would be amazing yeah. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel you can do so over on Kofi by buying us a coffee or jack a wee treat or if you want to help us out more long term you can become one of our amazing patrons over on patreon where you get lots of extra content for helping us out every month and we just uploaded last week the Q&A with Jack Spaniel so that means there's one from each of us answering all the patrons questions and a very exciting exclusive reveal for our patrons oh and it is really exciting as well all the links to these pages are in the video description below Hello. thanks again for watching our video and we will see you do, 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 do. next week oh oh yeah I went really high pitched there <laughs> you went high now in Elvis <laughs> What are we going to do next week, I wonder? Oh. We're leaving our suburban life Moving over the sea to sky Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see When we're living the sky life Living the sky life Hi, Hi folks! Hi. Down, Jack. Standing on logs from the log store. <laughs> shorty. Hey, Shorty. It's your birthday. No, it isn't. It's mine. Well, it's, not, just, it's not yours. It was last week. I knew that was going to happen. I really should get another one of these tables. This one's goosed. Doesn't help that I left it outside in Richard's garden for about a month when I had COVID. It doesn't have a, a really overwhelming swent. swent. <laughs> Sounds like it's raining. It's raining a little bit in our tin shed. <laughs> and yeah, she's done these all up the mountains. Thank you, Jack. So they're gonna go up there. And Jack's squeaking his toy outside. <laughs> Pull that up, baby. No. Oh. <laughs> it's an anchovy. <laughs> Yeah.
I've caught a few of them already today. <laughs> it's debatable if it's payable. <laughs> What's going on here? I don't know. Broke the dog. You broke on his butt. <laughs> it doesn't usually sit like this. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look very comfortable. I know how to fix it. <laughs> Click here to subscribe to live in the sky life. Click here to go back to the start of our adventures with our very first episode.